Thank you. Let's see if I can get this in a helpful place. Is that okay? Sounds a little better. Um, one of the things that made me feel better, actually, I don't know, those of you that were here first, Michael, who was the uh, first presenter, is not a uh, GIS person, and neither am I. Um, I'm a musician, I guess, by degree. But I've been working in marketing for about 10 years, um, mostly nonprofit. So um, can I just ask, who here has a background in, in GIS, in spatial information, and related technologies? OK. And who does not? Who are the people? OK. OK. Um, I, like, as I said, I have no formal education in this area, but I have two things that help me in this endeavor. Um, I'm naive and I'm stubborn. So <laughs> those are helpful qualities to have. Um, one of the things that, I'm just going to skip a slide here, actually. Um, I sort of stumbled into civic hacking. I went to the, there's an education tech hackathon here back in May in Philadelphia. And I do have a background um, in marketing and front end design as it sort of dovetails with you know, email marketing and website content management. Um, I've hacked on some WordPress installations. And so I showed up this hackathon thinking I would just help out as a designer um, and ended up working on a project that was a visualization not of my Google Calendar, but of uh, the school district's budget data here in Philadelphia, which, um, if you're not from Philadelphia, is a pretty hot topic because the school system is in dire straits for various reasons, financial and otherwise. Um, and so this was the first data visualization I've ever worked on. I was lucky to be working with a, uh, a guy who's um, a developer um, for a local web shop and happens to also run Code for Philly, which is the local brigade of Code for America. So I ended up learning about civic hacking, open data, sort of in a crash course that weekend, and then joined Code for Philly um, shortly after that, and kind of became rapidly familiar slash obsessed with <laughs> the available data here in Philadelphia. Um, that's a little, that's a meetup um, that's probably hard to see. Um, but they meet weekly here in Philly, and there's a catalog of open data. Um, that is, I think, probably somewhere in the middle in terms of availability compared to other cities. Um, they're currently doing an audit of what's available and what people would like to see um, at, the, at the city government level. Um, but I became obsessed with this concept that you, know, you have access to, to data that you can impose over other data, whether it be census, um, GIS. You can pull this stuff together and actually start to interpret um, meaning or hopefully find some meaning in it. Um, because I had such a background in visual, um, in the visual art and, and designing for meaning, I found, I was searching for ways that I could get involved and I found Mapbox, which most of you are probably familiar with, at least in a general sense. As someone that had a background in design, I found it very easy to use it's a desktop application that allows you to access and style the layers available in OpenStreetMap. Um, and it's, it's worth playing with if you have any interest ever in styling custom tiles, custom-based maps. Um, Mapbox basically breaks down and makes available, um, as you can see, on the right-hand side, that's actually um, Carto CSS, which is sort of an extension if you're not familiar with regular CSS that you use on the web. And it enables you to bracket like zoom levels for styles. You can you know make lines thicker and style colors. You can even do um, overlay raster imagery over um, as part of the base map. You can do compositing to add texture to base, base maps and then upload all of it to Mapbox which hosts the tiles for you. And I believe in the last month or so they've changed their pricing structure so that the free accounts now let you upload one custom set of tiles and host for free. Um, which is new. It used to cost you $50 a month. Um, I think the $5 a month account was like three, three custom base maps. Um, and there's a cap on views. But anyway, um, I started playing around with custom tiles. I just thought it would be neat to try to make a, a base map that looked like a blueprint. It was just an exercise in learning, learning Carto CSS, learning how, um, how things that appear in the browser, that solid blue background and white water features looks terrible. So don't do it. Um, but then I started thinking about what if 
um, we could map parking data here because, uh, as my dad calls it, I have a history of civil disobedience that manifests in parking tickets. Um, and once you hit a certain point with that, it's really difficult to find information on, um, you know, how do I pay it? How do I, if you get to the point where your car has been towed, not that that's happened to me, uh, how do you get it? How, how do you, how do you preempt that? How do you, um, you know, in theory, there's a place where you can go and get on a payment plan, but none of that information is available online. And it just makes everything more difficult. The signs are kind of hard to interpret around here. Um, I don't know if you're not from here. Um, they're, they could be stacked, you know, five deep, and then you have to kind of read all the way through before you can suss out what it actually means for right now, at this moment, is it legal to park? Um, so I started trying to dig around. First, I started with uh, the residential parking permits, RPPs, in the industry. Um, but it was impossible to find any visual representation of that. So I looked at the parking authority's website. There wasn't even a listing of how many there were or where they were. And uh, my friend Google found it only available in the city code as text. And I'd never made a map before. <laughs> So I turned to Mapbox, and it's extraordinarily easy, much more easy, I think, than even in Google Maps to start drawing polygons. And it just gives you the option to put two pieces of, um, two properties, the title and description. And what I ended up doing is drawing a custom shape file by hand. And one of the other beautiful things is that Mapbox lets you download a GeoJSON kind of with one click. I didn't necessarily know what GeoJSON was at that time, but um, I have since then um, released it uh, as an open set on GitHub as part of the Code for Code repo. Um, so I kind of made this into a little app. I dusted off some CSS and responsive stuff so that it looked good on mobile because I figured that was really one of the times people would be using this kind of stuff. Um, and it turned out that I wasn't the only one looking for this. Um, I had actually done like a Google trend search to see who else was interested in parking data in Philadelphia. And I saw an interesting pattern. Every July and August, there's a peak in searches for parking data in Philadelphia, which is not that hard to imagine. And then there's a dip in October, and then around the holidays, and then it would go down again. But again, I knew I wasn't alone. And this was the simplest layer that I thought I could start with. It has the biggest areas, the most general rules. Um, the street level is a little bit different in terms of not every block in every one of these areas here is permit parking only. However, what I found was some of my friends looked at it and re didn't realize that their parking zone was that big. So in some of the more central parking zones, um, Center City Zone 1, they didn't realize that that whole area is Zone 1. So just because you have a sticker, there are like 3,000 other people that have a sticker all in that area. So no wonder you can still never find parking. Um, like, and I was started to wonder, well, I mean, is anybody looking at the number of these that they live in there? Um, turns out they're not really, but um, the local tech blog wrote a story on my little map, which I had tweeted once uh, after staying up until 3 a.m. <laughs> finishing. Um, like I said, it was a bit of an obsession. And they picked it up, and, you know, an hour after my tweet, I was on the phone with technically talking about this silly map that I made, which, you know, is, is just a dumb map, you know? It doesn't infer anything particularly um, poignant. But a few days after that, I looked at my uh, statistics because I said the base map, I was just posting it on um, Mapbox, and something like 16,000 views <laughs> um, of this silly one map, you know. Um, and I got a call, or first I got a tweet, actually, a direct message from the PTA, <laughs> that's the parking authority here. And they said, hey, one of our managers would like to talk to you about that map you made, and I went, okay. <laughs> Um, you know, I never said anything about the, about the organization or anything, but I didn't know if they wanted to just post it on their social media or if they wanted to actually talk about the map. So I um, ended up on the phone with uh, uh, some, somewhere in middle management over at the authority, and they said, why did you make that map? And I said, well, because you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, they were interested, and I, by that point, had been um, going to Code for Philly meetups, and I said, well, do you know about civic hacking? Do you know what it is? And he flinched when I said the word hacking, so I assumed he didn't. Um, that's still a scary word for some people in government. Uh, they don't understand the positive connotations. 
And uh, I actually went in to meet with them and, and ended up writing sort of a primer in open data and civic hacking, which um, here in Philadelphia, the parking authority is a bit of an odd, an odd case. It's actually a state agency whose largest client is the city of Philadelphia. So even though we have a fairly robust and growing open data program in the city of Philadelphia, the parking authority had no idea what that was. Um, they didn't know the city has a, an office with people who get paid to help them release data. Um, so I was able to kind of make the connection from my meetups at Code for Philly, I knew um, who, Tim Wisniewski, who's now the chief data officer um, of Philadelphia, and I said, hey Tim, I met with the PCA last week. Um, I, have you guys talked to them? And he said, no, <laughs> would love to. Like, um, and so I was able to make this connection. Um, and we met with um, this manager who was really forward thinking. In fact, uh, he embraced everything when I started talking about how their data could be overlaid possibly with um, data from the streets department, with data from the police department. I mean, if you think about all the agencies that act on signage and enforcement in the city, um, it's a lot. And I said, well, look, I'm working on this project where I really like to um, map all the parking in, in Philadelphia. And what I found is people that work with this data every day don't think about the ways in which it can be applied when in, you know, combined with other kinds of data. So I said, well, what if we overlaid this with this? And, and it kind of, it was like a mind-blowing revelation. And it was, I'm really lucky in that in this guy that reached out to us um, was open-minded and, and wanted to learn more and, and was happy to connect us up with uh, his superiors. So as of a few weeks ago, the PCA in Philadelphia is going to start releasing their data, um, which is kind of a big deal. Um, if you were to go to look at their, their website right now, they have a parking finder that has about 12 garages on it. So yeah. There are 125,000 spots in the city of Philadelphia that the PCA manages. And none of them are accessible <laughs> via online medium at all. No, not for the rules, not for location, nothing. Um, I'm lucky in that Mark Head, uh, previously mentioned, who used to be the chief data officer here in Philadelphia, had managed to, through a few connections, get one set of data that was relevant released. Um, and it was a, an inventory of the parking kiosks that are out here. Um, so these green, these green beasts that are on the street out here that print out tickets that you put on your dashboard. Um, there was an inventory of those and then the old school meters. Um, so I know way more about parking meter models than I ever wanted to know. They, there are apparently some out near City Hall that have been around since 1942. Um, the only other thing that was available are these generic uh, national level parking apps, right? Park Me, they sort of pull in every bit of um, publicly available data they've got. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of feeds that they grab in large uh, metros. Um, and it does present, represent a lot more of the garage type uh, or lot, surface lots, but that's, it's still not street level data. Um, when I looked at the set that we do have available, this is in the, sorry, that we do have available, there's some problems with it as any of you that have dealt with open data before probably have seen um, it's an old, I, I don't know what they're running, but as you can see at the top, ooh, what is that? Uh, at the top of the chart there is uh, some nice asterisks that run all the way across. That happened about every 20 lines. Can anybody guess why? This system was designed at a time when they would output the, the manifest uh, on that matrix printers with the holes on the sides, and it would, that's every page. So those are pa that's pagination. That's that's the age of the system that they're working with. So it's not shocking that the like you know people. Well, why won't you release the data? They don't know how. I mean, it's so old. They're just dealing with this GUI every day. I think you know probably just filling in forms and things like that. It's just it's just Windows. So there was a lot of hygiene that needed to be done. Um, fortunately. Um, I have a really good friend who's pretty proficient in R, so he threw the set in there, cleaned it. We, uh, these, these holes down here, each line, is, um, each line is, is a meter, and then anytime you see blank lines, that's a meter with more than one set of hourly rules. So there was no primary key available in the set for each set of rules. So we had to write the meter number down for each set of rules so that we could eventually think about um, database architecture, which again, I had no idea how to do. And, I've been on kind of a crash course in SQL and sort of 
designing how this can be best referenced on the fly. Um, so after a lot of that transformation, um, I was able to get most of these lines to geocode, at least at the point level. Um, and I've, I'm at the, currently at the spot where I've got a problem to solve, and I might ask if anybody here is interested in helping <laughs> um, a theoretical problem. So, oh, this is my blank slide about layers in progress. <laughs> um, there are about eight different kinds of data that we need to compile, because even though we talk about street parking, there are 50 lots in the city of Philadelphia that are, are what they call residential neighborhood parking lots. If you've ever been in near, um, in South Philly, Pashunk Avenue, or up in Fishtown next to the Bottle Bar, there is an empty lot that's free parking. Some of them, it's free for anybody for an unlimited amount of time. Some people use, uh, some of them have signs up that say it's limited as if it were street parking for two hours, except if you have that neighborhood uh, residential permit. There's no centralized manifest of this. There's one PDF that's a list of these things. So just last week I was able, there's nothing machine readable about it. So I did some OCR and then started um, drawing polygons because I think it would be best to have it represented as areas instead of um, points. Um, there are also, in that, during the process of that, I used just looking at street view to look at these lots. Some of them are gigantic lots, you know, uh, 300 spots that just no one uses anymore in these remote areas of Philadelphia, which is really interesting. Um, and since I'm a graphically oriented person to keep myself from going crazy during this process, I finally started designing a, a GUI. So the goal was to make a web application because uh, I don't want to be tied down to um, uh, iOS or Android. I want the most, I want the least barrier, I guess, to utilization. So right now, there are about 11,000 lines of meter data that I have geocoded um, that's searchable right now as points. And the difficulty that I ran into, which is the problem I'm asking for help solving since I'm here, um, we need to build a grid that's, that accounts for sides of streets. So the city, city of Philadelphia has a street center line file. And there ought to be in my, I'm assuming, there ought to be a way to automate this. However, when you, if you try to intersect the curb lines with the street center street, street center lines, you run into the problem of losing attributes. Um, so we can't associate that street with it, the rest of its information. Because when we, when we overlay the meter data, it's, we won't primarily want to be able to represent block segments. So if we're searching, I don't necessarily just want to show you where the meters are. I want to be able to show you where that parking, where those rules apply. Um, so um, we want to be able to do location-based searches and searches by either length of time or um, uh, rate or cost. Um, and all of that stuff is pretty simple to build once we have the right data to underline. And this, this sides of street thing only needs to be done once, um, and then we can associate the rules with it as we go. So these residential permit districts, which is the first thing that got me into this, um, the, surface, the surface lots, the garages that are currently available to search. And uh, the next step that the PTA is gonna work on for us is uh, ballet zones in Center City specifically, and then the handicapped spots that are peppered over the whole city. Um, and uh, that's basically, oh, and I actually ended up getting a job offer out of this. <laughs> um, so my obsession with, with uh, the parking data sort of led to um, talking with the city and early December, I'm going to go work for the city of Philadelphia. So. <laughs> um, so, if you think you may be able to help with this problem, feel free to uh, tweet at me or connect me with me after this. Uh, anybody have any questions? 